Hello YouTube, how's it going? Today is actually a very special video that we filmed for our patrons, but we've put up on YouTube anyway because um, they've asked some really great questions that we thought you guys would actually like to see. Yeah. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, welcome. We teach people how to do Chinese takeaway food as well as traditional stuff, which we'll be branching out, branching out, branching out doing soon. Um, doing soon. We'll be branching out and doing soon. Yeah. Yes, that's words. Anyway, I'm Mike and this is my mum Chu. Hello. Okay, so we reached out to our patrons and we said you can ask us any questions you want. We got um, a few people ask us uh, questions, so we're going to answer them. Yeah, we're going to answer it. Yes. We do our best, okay? You alright? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry, just have a sip of beer. Mm. Yeah, cheers. Okay, so our first question is from John J. Thank you very much for being a patron. Yeah, John Jay, yes. Uh, hi, Chin and Chi. My question concerns the preparation and the storage of the fermented black bean paste and pureed garlic. Now, we haven't actually done a video on the pureed garlic. That is actually going to be up probably within 24 hours of this one, so keep watching. Um, I followed your prep video for the beans, but realised after it was much too much for one use. Um, so I've stored the remainder in the fridge. After a month or so, it has started to develop a fur coat. My question is, because it is fermented, is this expected and what I should be aiming for? And if it is safe <laughs> to use? No. 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 I think it's because your pot might have moisture in it. Yeah. It's got to be totally dry, the container. So if you have, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. If, if anything's furry in your fridge, you shouldn't eat it. It's just a rule of thumb. Yeah. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, eat, we wouldn't go anywhere near it if it's got fur if, on. If it's still in your fridge, I think you know where to put it. Mm. In the bin. But, yeah. yes, like Mum was saying, you need to make sure that the pot you put the, the beans in is Bone dry. When I say bone dry, not a single drop of moisture. A single drop of moisture will cause it to spoil much, much more quickly. Also, the container and the lid as well. Yeah, and it should last for about, without anything else, it will last about two months before. Yeah, I will still okay. Yeah, I was, I was literally going to say something oh. there. Ours has lasted, like our personal one, we made about three months ago, didn't yeah, we? So. No, there's no. Um, no white fur coat. No white fur coat. <laughs> it's not looking fabulous from Harrods. It's uh, <laughs> you enjoyed that one, did you? Man? It's yeah, no fur coat because the, the container we put them in was completely dry. Also, um, you can make it last longer by putting a layer of oil all over the top. A lot of takeaways, like unbusy takeaways, most takeaways don't do this because they can cycle through the take. yeah, they can and they can cycle through the black beans quite quickly. So. There's no need for it, but um, smaller, much smaller ones that aren't as busy, we'll put a layer of oil on the top and that will stop any sort of um, fur coat yeah. from forming. <laughs> oh, Sorry. I'm just Sorry, laughing at Harrods, so yeah. Yeah, it's fur coat. Harrods, give us free stuff. Anyway. <laughs> also the garlic puree, the exact same thing. The garlic puree won't, if you put the right amount of combination in, shouldn't go furry because you, you put some salt in there as well, and the, the amount of oil is pretty much, should submerge the garlic anyway, and if it's going furry, it just means that you need more oil in the future when you're making the garlic puree. Video to come on that very soon, as we said. Um, that was actually a very good video. A video? That was a very good question, John. Um, I'm glad you asked that, because I'm sure some other people have had that problem as well. So. Oh, you're so sweet. You wish us Merry Christmas. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't Thank that. you. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Love John. Yeah, so. much love from Chin and Chu. We're not, yeah, we're not taking a picture. Oh, alright. <laughs> <laughs> they can see us. 
Yeah, they can, yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you very much for that, John. Okay, so the next question is from Neil Harris. And he's got three, actually. Most of us know that takeaway food we get is an adaptation to suit EAK styles, and we, and we like it that way. Um, do the Chinese community mind this? No, no, they don't mind it. They're not, um, what's the word, sensitive, are they? No, no. How do you, how, what, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about... What, what is the question? <laughs> how do you feel about um, the, U, the Chinese food being adapted to UK tastes? No, I don't mind it, but it's what uh, the, the people want to eat, isn't it? Yeah, precisely. They're yeah. running a business. If yeah, that's what you guys want, yeah. that's what you get. It's yeah. this simple. Okay, so the second question. Does your family ever eat takeaway style food? Great question. As you can probably tell from my frame, I partake in a takeaway every now and then. And yes, I buy it because it's not as good when you make it, in my opinion, when someone else makes it, it tastes a little bit better, but I am cooking all day long, and cooking is my job, so I like to let someone else do it. Mum? Me? Do you ever have a takeaway? What, what sort of takeaway, including a KFC? <laughs> yeah, we all know you love KFC. You should see mum at KFC. No, not KFC, is in, do you ever have oh, Chinese, Chinese takeaway? takeaway? Yeah. No, not, not that often, is it? No. Only if I have it. Yeah. Um, or we're going out together. Yeah. We'll sometimes get, but that's only because we know the people who own the, the shop. Yeah. We know lots of people who own takeaways, like lots. Mm. <laughs> okay, three. I'm allergic to seafood, brackets, fish, oysters, oyster sauce, sorry, etc. What can I use as an alternative? Thanks, Neil. <sighs> that's difficult because fish sauce and oyster sauce are very two different flavors. Um, in terms of oyster sauce, Mushroom soy sauce is the closest thing you can get to it. Uh, mushroom oyster, uh, mushrooms, dark soy sauce, Pearl River do a really nice one. If you mix that with molasses, um, sugar, you'll get a nice sweet. Is it intolerant or <clears throat> allergy? It's got an allergy, so uh, it cannot eat. Is it? What, it come out in a rush? Well, or, or they die. Oh, all right, okay. So you have to be careful then. Yeah, do, yeah mm. don't go, don't chug any. Yeah. Seafood broth. There's no other alternative, isn't it? No, what? Mushroom soy sauce. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, molasses sugar mm. is a nice alternative to oyster sauce. Fish sauce is difficult. Oh, no, sorry, you mean just. It just says fish. Um, chicken. Chicken is a better alternative, if you ask me. I'm not a fan of seafood. I would just use chicken. What would you do? Me? Yeah. I, I won't put any in. You wouldn't put anything Just soy sauce. No. no, no. <laughs> and as an alternative to fish. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean fish, actually, the fish. You know, like Not fish that like swim oh. in the sea. You can have chicken. I've got fish sauce as well, but I wasn't. You can have chicken or pork or duck. Are you just going to name meats, mum? Huh? You're just naming meats? Yeah, that's what you could use. No, but what's the most similar? Oh, jackfruit! What is jackfruit? Jackfruit! What is it? Like durian, but jackfruit. I don't understand. You know jackfruit? Yes. You can cook it slowly and it goes like fish. Oh, you want the texture of fish, is it? Well, no, you can use that instead of fish. Oh, okay. Wait, you, do you know what jackfruit is or are you just yeah, saying Yeah, 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 I know jackfruit. What is it? The, the big... Jackfruit. Okay, you didn't know what jackfruit is. So you can use jackfruit. And actually, if you're vegetarian or vegan, jackfruit does a really good job at pretending to be pork as well, because it's really stringy. Thank you for those three questions, Neil. They were really good. Um, now, the next is from Chris Reese. He's also got three questions. We have the first one. On the subject of oyster sauce, what brand would you recommend? Now, there are two types that I do recommend, and they're both the same brand, and then that sounds odd. Would you say it first, because I want to see if you agree with me. What's the brand? Uh, same made. Yeah. Uh, different, is it? It's not a different type. 
It's not brand, different type. Yeah, different type, but the yeah. brand is what? The brand is, is that LK Care? Yeah. yeah. Ligongi. Ligongi actually invented oyster sauce. They are the people that, well, the original founder, um, Gumgi or something like that, or Lee, whatever his name was, accidentally made it when making oyster broth. He left it on the pan for too long um, in his restaurant and created oyster sauce. And I'm not just saying this because I feel it's the best flavour, it's genuinely the best flavour. They've got two types, they've got one with a panda on and one with like a lady on. The one with the lady on has the higher concentration of oyster sauce. Um, that's the one we use and that's the one we use in our shops. A lot of places won't because it's a little bit more expensive but you can tell the difference, you really yes. can. So yeah, that's the brand that we would use. Second question. In the egg fried rice video, how many grams of uncooked rice were prepared and cooled for the recipe? Um, that's really difficult because in Chinese cooking, like when we measure our stuff for you guys, we spent about a good three or four hours beforehand measuring things out because we are just so used to picking something up and throwing it in and it tasting the same every time because we're used to it. Obviously we taste every dish we make as you can tell, but um, if you don't, I'm, I've just realised, I, I don't know if this is recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panic over! Um, yeah, if you don't taste, um, sorry, no, that's not the question. If um, you don't measure, we don't measure just, ourselves. Just go like that. Oh yeah, that's enough. Like that. But I do know in that case, because we did measure that time, it is 100 grams of uncooked rice which makes about 200. If always over measure by 10 grams, that's what I say when it comes to rice. So that way you've always just got enough. Yeah. Yeah? Anyway, so that 100 grams. Uncooked, so about 220, 200 cooked. And the last question from Chris Reese is, I'm just wondering if I'm getting my rice to MSG slash soap ratio correct. Not a great question, but helpful nonetheless. Thanks. Um, I don't know without watching you cook. Yeah. Are you referring to the fried rice? If you're referring to the fried rice, you need, it's difficult again, it, without being in front of a pan and looking and then measuring afterwards, I can't tell you if I'm honest. Yeah, more, more salt than this one, isn't it? Oh, MSG to salt ratio. Yeah. No, more, more, more MSG, MSG to salt. salt. Yeah. So the ratio that we would work on for takeaway food is for every three MSGs is one salt. Yeah. So if you have one gram of salt, you have three grams of MSG. It's, um, salt's really, really strong as well, especially when you're using MSG. Someone pointed out the other day, one of our videos that we use MSG, salt, soy and stuff like that. Yes. Um, it's salty, that's all I can say. That's why takeaway food is, tastes so good, because it is quite salty. Thank you very much for those questions, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, next one. <clears throat> next question is from Harrison Gates. What kind of food do you eat when you're at home? Oh, we eat many kinds. Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, we eat um, a lot. We eat Chinese, we eat English, we eat Western. A lot. Spaghetti. Yeah, um, Italian. Roast dinner. Yeah. A mixture of food we eat, not just one type. Barbecue, oh. stew. I have, I have a lot of pizza. Yeah, I don't. I'm not regular on pizza. Yeah, but you do have a favourite pizza. Yeah, it's only now and then. I only had about three this year, that's all. Three, yeah. Uh, yeah, we eat everything. Actually, Personally, I eat more rice than anything else. Yeah, we do eat more rice. So I reckon 50% is rice-based dishes. I eat something with sauce and rice, duck and rice, chicken and rice. Um, and then the other 50 is a mixture of everything. Thanks for that, Harrison Gates. Gates. Thanks, Harrison. Yeah, thank you for that. Now we have Nonagon3, whose real, whose real name is Justin. So hello, Justin. Um, Three questions, again from him. What is the most popular dish ordered at your takeaway? 
Oh, that's a good question. Like, we haven't done a, a takeaway takeaway for the last four years? Three years. Mm. Three years. We've now branched away and gone into um, Oriental street food because that's actually how my grandma started off and that's how my my family made money. They, they didn't make money from building and then come over and bought a takeaway. They made money from food, serving local food to locals. That's what we do now. And drinks as well. And, yeah, and drinks. Um, that's what we do now. So we, we branched away because so many people have takeaways. We want to be a bit different, but our best selling dish is either chicken rice. Sounds boring as hell. I know. You should come and try it. You should come and try it. Come say hello to us as well. Blow your mind up. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> it is. It's nice. It's gorgeous. And um, we get write ups every every now and then about our food. And um, Nasi Goren is probably a bigger seller. Yeah. Because everyone seems to know what Nasi Goren is. But again, these are all family recipes that are really, really old. It's not just. Um, it's not like the takeaway food that it's been passed on just to make money. We actually really care about what we do. We don't make the same profit margins, anywhere near the same profit margins as everyone else does. And it does mean that actually sometimes we do struggle, especially during the winter. But, you know, I'm just being honest with you guys. Um, yeah, it is true. Yeah, because our margins are literally raise the thin compared to yeah. everyone else's. Because our ingredients, isn't it? Because we use really good ingredients. Yes. Like we use fr everything's fresh. Everything's done fresh every day. But anyway, yeah, that was a good question. What is your favourite non-Chinese dish? You both. Oh, well, we both enjoy. Um, I don't have a particular favourite uh, dish, I would say. I do have a favourite brand of food that I go to every time. Um, which is, which uh, unfortunately, I know some of you are going to be growing, that's disgusting, but KFC. Mm. Non takeaway dish you both enjoy. Oh, wait, that's, does that yeah. count as a takeaway? Um, sort of, isn't it? Well, what do you enjoy? What, not, what is your favourite non Chinese dish you both enjoy? Not just takeaway, isn't it? Yeah. I think like when I go, I normally go for. Even I go for Italian, I won't eat the uh, pizza. I always go for the seafood. Yeah, the seafood uh, spaghetti I normally go for. No, no, no cheese on it. It's only cooked with tomato. That's what I always go for. If we're not talking like just general food and takeaway, um, I, if we're going to a restaurant, I steak. Yes, always mm. steak. I like to be more adventurous. I always have pate for a starter if they have it. Not chicken liver, because that's weird. But if they have like another like Brussels pate, I'm all over that. Main fish, fish steak, and that mostly seafood for me. I'd normally go for lasagna, if I'm honest. <laughs> I love lasagna. Okay, so the third question. Oh, Sunday roast. Oh yeah, Calvary. Yeah. Calvary, great shout. Oh, great we shout. have a lovely Calvary down the road there. They're not serving anymore. And then we used to have one in our local main town in Taunton. The shop is called, the department store is called Hatches. And yeah. guess what? They took that roast dinner out. You couldn't have any roast dinner in Taunton now. No. That's our nearest man town, Taunton. But in, in their defence, Hatches was full of people who were plus 80. No, not really, because the staff in there were really terrible. Um, uh, next time we go, right, <laughs> next time we go to Taunton, I'll go with Mum and we'll walk round with the camera on and it will be full of 80 year olds. Not that there's anything wrong with being 80. I'm just saying that 80 year olds can't manage a whole carvery. Why would you have it on? It was on every day, that's why. Yeah, that was the best one. Yeah. Yeah? Go on, talk about something there, Yeah, I'm starving. <laughs> I'm really hungry now. Okay, why did you decide to end up living in the West Country? Thanks, guys. Justin. Justin. I was born here. My dad is from Watchit. Um, so he's been here all his life. My dad's English. Uh, Mum. I'm um, obviously Chinese. I'm not from mainland China. And my grandparents move away from China, but I'm still Chinese. It doesn't mean that I'm not born in China, I'm not Chinese, but I'm still Chinese. Still got 
speak and write everything. Mum can speak three different forms of Chinese and Besides Malaysian dialects, yeah. and English. Yeah. Because Mum was born in where? In Brunei, in the island of Borneo. Yeah. And got married and ended up in here and that's where we are here in West Country. It's beautiful West Country. Yeah, if you've never been, you should... Where are you from? No, Justin, where are you? Which part of England you are in? Justin. No, I'm not Justin! What are you asking? <laughs> well, um... Yeah, well, West Country is lovely there. And if you guys, well, not just patrons, any of you guys on YouTube ever want to come say hello to us, um, by all means, pop in, say hello, get some yes. food. It's honestly very... You won't get anything like our food anywhere. We get people travel from London, um, just to have our food. Yes. The, the, it's just the way. It's just the way it is. That was weird. Is that it? I think that is it. Yeah. All right. That would be really good. So again, thank you very much for patrons uh, for supporting the channel. This is a little thanks to you guys for donating money to us. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, it's great. Without you, we'd not be sitting here and talking to you. Keep it up guys. Yeah, if you fancy supporting the channel and becoming a patron, but we do we are more active on Patreon with people as well. We tend to um because we the notifications pop up. I don't know what it is with YouTube. The, long story, frustrating, uh, really irritates me. But it could just be my phone. I don't think it is. I don't know anything I know, Mom, about this Mom's modern technology. Anyway, I passed my BJCE without any computer. What's a BGCE? No, oh no, that was my, when I, I was 13 years old. The Brunei Junior, something like that. Certificate, I think it's L, is it? Was it all level? Yeah, all level standard. Like GCSE then? Yes. You passed? Well, sort <laughs> of. That's a no, isn't it? <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, again, thank you to uh, our patrons and a massive thank you to you subscribers as well. Yeah. You guys have literally sent the channel rocketing up. Yeah. We're like one of the most search searchable um, Chinese cookery channels on YouTube now. And that's all thanks to you guys yeah. watching and subscribing. We cannot thank you enough. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you. What was that? I've never seen I've never seen you bow before. <laughs> no, this is what Kung Fu Master. Yes, Kung Fu Master. Anyway, yes. Um, happy cooking. Yeah, happy cooking and happy watching. See you again. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>